It is a pleasure oh, yeah. to see you. Um, this was amazing on so many levels. What I wanted to know about, can you talk about the technology? Because you're able to capture not just visuals, but sounds that we as humans wouldn't possibly be able to pick up. Yeah, so um, being able to show people things about animals that you can't see with the naked eye, uh, we had to use a lot of technology. Uh, so we use a lot of new tech in cameras. We use ultra low light cameras, ultra high speed cameras, thermal cameras, uh, ultraviolet cameras, uh, first person drones, all these kind of things to try and take you into this extra sensory world of animals. And, and as you say, we also, where we were talking about how animals use sound, used uh, contact microphones and this kind of thing to, to, to allow people to experience the natural world in a way that they can't if they just step outside and look at it. I was also wondering how much research goes into each episode. There's so many things like the connection of the trees and just the prey and predator and then rivals. And then you have birds making fun of other animals. Yeah, we wanted to find stories that would blow people's minds, things they hadn't seen before or things that we could reveal in a new light. Uh, so the research element is very, very intensive. We, we're, we're basically researching all the way through the production period. So even when we think we've decided on things we're going to film, we always think, oh, well, you know, we've got five great stories, but those two, we could find something better. So we keep pushing and keep pushing. And we speak to a lot of scientists, a lot of naturalists to just try and find those new angles on animals that people have seen before. Now, I know there was some new injuries and such as the turtles waiting for their babies already in the water. Was there any that was made during this filming? What, that we actually discovered as we filmed them? Oh, that's yes. an interesting question. Uh, I don't know, that's a really good question. I'm not sure, there's certainly lots of things like you mentioned that we went to film the synchronous, synchronous fireflies that hadn't been shown on TV before. Uh, we went, we found, uh, have you seen the scuba lizard? Yes. Yeah, that, I mean, that was very fresh, uh, fresh kind of discovery that we, we jumped onto and that, that was an amazing sequence. I don't know if there's any particular thing that people observed in the field that was new to science, but it, but it is true quite often when we're filming because we're spending every day with these animals, we record things that even the scientists who've been studying them for years haven't seen and they'll go, you know, they never do this. And then we'll say, well, we actually called it on camera doing that. So, um, so yeah, um, but I can't think of an exact example for this one. Can you talk about kind of the film process? How long did it take? And also how did you narrow down which species you wanted? So the filming process, we filmed over about two and a half years. Uh, and it's worth mentioning that most of that was during the pandemic, so it made it triply complicated. Um, I would say each shoot on average is probably about three weeks long, some longer, some shorter. Uh, and how did we pick the stories? Uh, I think we just, you know, as we said, we spend such a long time talking to scientists and kind of talking to old filmmakers, seeing if there's anything new out there. And we, we just keep looking at the stories and want to check that we found the really the most visually exciting ones, the most scientifically revelatory ones, and, and a good mix as well. You know, you don't want to have one show that's only got stories about bears in it, or for example. Interestingly, a lot of the really fascinating behaviors we found are within birds. And uh, so there seem to be quite a few birds in this series, which, which I think some people think birds aren't that interesting. But when you look into their lives, they're absolutely fascinating. They do a lot of you know, similar things to humans, but in the most extraordinary ways. The pandemic. I was wondering, was there any change in behavior kind of absent? Uh, sorry, you broke up a bit there. Were you saying was there any change in behavior? Was there any, the any change in behavior or return to that wasn't observed before because of the pandemic? Because humans really wasn't around to really sit there and interact or disrupt the environment? Yes, yeah, so it's interesting. It, it, sometimes it made things easier. So that, you know, in places where sometimes the animals would avoid people, uh, they, they were more relaxed because there were less people around. So in a lot of the 
the national parks say in Kenya, where normally you have a lot of tourists driving around and that kind of thing, because there were less people, it made filming easier and sometimes made the animals less on guard. But there were other times where there were places where the animals were used to people being around and then suddenly no one had been there for a year. So let's say the scientists had spent a long time habituating a group of animals so you could get closer to them to film them. And of course they couldn't be there for a year. So a lot of that hard work was undone. So you, you turn up to this place and it was almost like you were getting them used to people again. <laughs> that I really loved was the fact that you not only went into the jungles and the forest, but you went into the city of Chicago to talk about the birds. Can you talk about that kind of change? Rainforest, but instead we also got city life. Yeah, no, it's really interesting. We, we, I think it's really important in these days to feature sequences that don't just pretend there's, you know, there's this kind of pristine wilderness and that animals aren't having to adapt and evolve around us. So uh, it's really fun for me to tell stories about uh, animals adapting to the city and how how some animals like the peregrines actually are doing really well. You know, it's not always bad news. Uh, there's also, also a story about a jumping spider that um, feeds on mosquitoes that feeds on human blood. Did you see that one? Yes. Uh, yeah, so I think it's really interesting. And I think more often nowadays, people don't want to see the natural world as something distant that, you know, separate to us. We're realizing we're part of it and, you know, we need to... Uh, need to kind of integrate with it in order to protect it. So it's really great to be able to show stories of, especially success stories of where humans and animals are coexisting in relative harmony. And lastly, what I really was interested in was there was uh, the turtles, when they were able to lay their eggs, they were able to communicate, you know, about the waves and the humidity. I was wondering how has climate affected not just also the turtles but the other animals as well in terms of behavior and when they lay their when they have their mating season how has that really changed and did you observe that during filming yeah absolutely we observe it all the time you know the the kind of the seasonality is being turned on its head uh, uh so when animals are expecting it to rain it's drought and vice versa so it's making life really tough interestingly with the turtles actually it's very um pertinent story a lot a lot of reptiles that the sex of their eggs is determined by the temperature at which they incubate at so there's a big worry that um a lot of reptiles that lay eggs that the, the populations they tend to skew much more female when they incubate in higher temperatures and uh i don't know about exactly with that that species but with some species they're really worried that you know in a few years time there's only going to be female you know, members of the species, and it's going to be really hard for them to find a mate. So, yeah, the climate change is affecting animals in all sorts of ways, and often ways that you wouldn't really think about. Thank you so much for speaking with me. I truly love the series. I learned so much. So thank you for having a hand in creating it. That's a pleasure. Well, thank you for speaking to me today. No nice to meet you. Take care.